service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Your full AccuWeather weather forecast is always on top on your CNC local pages. The man who was last known to be with Rochester teenager Larie Butler before she disappeared has been arrested in connection with her death. Rochester police officer Stephen Scott announced the arrest of 20-year-old Devant Lively on a second-degree murder charge. Lively turned himself into police on Friday afternoon. Police say he's the acquaintance who told them he dropped the 17-year-old girl off near East High School last Friday evening after driving her to the Marketplace Mall. The Butler family reported her missing early on Sunday morning. After a week of growing concern, police found Lurie Butler's body on Thursday in a swimming pool at a home on Dorrington Road in Irondequoit. City and Irondequoit detectives originally went there to execute a search warrant at 174 Dorrington, but evidence led them to a house next door where Laurelton firefighters pumped out the disused swimming pool and discovered the body. The Dorrington Road home police originally went to belongs to Devant Lively's grandmother. Arundaquite Police Chief Richard Boyan says the cause of the 17-year-old girl's death was trauma to the upper body. University of Rochester Medical Center officials showed off details of the new Golisano Children's Hospital Thursday. They say the $180 million addition to Strong Memorial Hospital will set new standards for pediatric care. The eight-story hospital expansion will be on Crittenden Boulevard. Groundbreaking is planned for late summer or early fall. It's expected to open in 2015. It's being financed in part through a $100 million fundraising campaign. The new building will give pediatric patients and their families private rooms and services that will make it easier for parents to stay rested and nourished while also worrying about their children. Pediatrician-in-Chief Dr. Nina Shore says the privacy will be an important factor. Families need to feel free and open to ask whatever questions they have and not embarrassed to ask something when there's somebody in the next bed whose family may be listening in. Um, and so the new hospital will have private rooms not only for the medical purpose of infection control, but for the family-friendly purpose of uh, allowing a family member to room in with the child and also allowing the family to have some privacy and to be able to discuss things freely with the physicians and nurses and therapists uh, who come by to take care of their child. A resource library will allow families to learn more about the illness or injury their children have, and a concierge service will assist parents with errands or needs that will allow them to focus more on their sick or injured child. New York State's Commissioner of Health has banned the sale of synthetic marijuana products in New York State. Local health officials are to make sure sales stop immediately. These substances consist of plant material coated with chemicals that mimic THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. They're sold as a legal alternative to pot in convenience stores, smoke shops, and tobacco stores under brand names such as Spice, K2, Mr. Nice Guy, and Galaxy Gold. Dr. Nirav Shah's order says these products have been linked to severe adverse reactions in smokers, including unconsciousness, renal failure, and death, they also commonly cause rapid heart rate, paranoid behavior, agitation and irritability, nausea and vomiting. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have released a study estimating that one in 88 children in the United States has been identified as having an autism spectrum disorder. The CDC study released Thursday looked at data from 14 communities across the nation. Rochester and upstate New York were not among the communities investigated, but a Rochester pediatrician says there has been an increased number of diagnoses in this area. Dr. Susan Hyman is the chief of neurodevelopmental and behavioral pediatrics for the Galasano Children's Hospital at the University of Rochester Medical Center. She represented the American Academy of Pediatrics as the CDC made this announcement in Atlanta. There has been an increased number of diagnoses. and. We should be very proud of how we've all worked together, how families have worked through advocacy channels to get resources, how school districts have worked to improve services, how early intervention has coordinated with screening and provision of effective early treatment. 
The CDC report marks a 23% increase in autism-type diagnoses since the last report in 2009. Some of this increase is due to the way children are identified and diagnosed in their communities, although exactly how much is due to these factors isn't known. To the left of this window are links to more information on these and other stories. Next news as it happens on CNC, updates when necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.